All your energy should be forced on what do I have to offer? What do I have to give? How can I be used in service? Humans are built to serve, period. Opportunity is in giving. It's not receiving. It's not getting, it's giving. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there is something greater inside you as well. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message from Oprah Winfrey. Also, if you wanna have more confidence, check out my 254 series. They're free. The links to join are in the description below. They think that success is supposed to happen like that. that. Their real work is to figure out where your power base is. Everybody has a different talent. And the reason we're all so messed up is because you're looking at everybody else's yeah. talent yeah. and wishing you had some of their talent. All the energy that you spend thinking about, wishing about, being jealous of, envious of anybody else is energy that you're not only putting out that's gonna come back to you negatively, but you're taking that away from you. All your energy should be forced on what do I have to offer? What do I have to give? How can I be used in service? Because Dr. King's message of not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. And there is not a job in here that you can do that you don't switch the paradigm to service and not make that job more fulfilling. I don't care what the job is. If you say, I'm a singer, I'm a dancer, I'm an artist. I'm a teacher, I'm a nurse. I'm a doctor, I'm a janitor, I'm a, I'm a clerk. I'm a... If you say, if I look at this from, how do I use this in service to something bigger than myself? It no longer becomes a job. It becomes an offering to the world. Humans are built to serve, period. Serving others is hardwired into our brain. It triggers the same area of your brain as food and sex. If you're not happy, it's because you're not serving. Either serving the world on this big mission that you have or serving the 25 closest people to you. If you're not happy, it's because you're not serving. So one of the hacks that I do in my life to get me to do the things that I'm afraid of or don't wanna do is through service. If I can connect any of my actions, like making videos, I don't necessarily like just sitting here talking to a camera, but I connect it to service. That I'm making this video, people are gonna watch it, hopefully they get inspired enough to take some kind of action and it's meaningful to their life or business. That makes me feel good, that's service. As soon as I can connect the action to service, I am all in. And that's the way to, to hack me. You want something from me? <laughs> Whether it's my wife or my team or general public, if it makes me feel like this will serve other people and it will have a big impact, then it's much easier for me to get a yes. It's easier for me to say I am in. And so this is one of the biggest challenges that I have uh, with Dr. Tess. So Dr. Tess is on my other channel where she's helping me play a bigger game. She's a psychologist out of Australia, one of the leading psychologists in Australia, and she coaches executives and entrepreneurs for performance, mental performance. And she's been constantly challenging me to, to share vulnerabilities, to share weaknesses, to, to talk about when I'm struggling or when I doubt myself. And she said, well, of course, like, don't you doubt yourself? Like, of course, all the time I doubt myself. All the time, all the time I'm, I'm thinking about why am I not further ahead? What if this thing doesn't work? Fears and insecurities all day long, of course. And so she's like, okay, you gotta share that. You gotta share it. But here's the thing. As soon as I get to sharing it, it's service, right? As soon as I go from feeling low energy or feeling afraid of something, and then I go to get my phone out and record a message, as soon as I make the connection that this is service, I feel great. It, the, the fear, the anxiety, the nerves are gone. And so my video ends up being super fit. Like, hey guys, I'm really nervous right now. 
you know, I gotta go make these videos. I hope they're good. It's fake because I'm, I'm in service mode now. And so what I do naturally of turning to service, I think is actually what you guys should do. I think that's actually the hack. I think whenever you are afraid of doing something or you're, you've got insecurities or, or some kind of weakness, some block that's preventing you from moving forward, turn it into service either serving the world, again, big mission, or just it's gonna serve somebody close to you that you know, the closest 20, 25 people in your life. If you can adjust it in your mindset that this scary thing, this thing that you don't wanna do or you're, you're afraid of is gonna help somebody, then you're way more likely to do it. That's where I default to. My, my challenge is the opposite. My challenge is I wanna sit in the fear and insecurity long enough to be able to make a message <laughs> and then think about service. This is one of the big things why I, I fail at, at Dr. Tess's assignments is because I'm too happy and I don't sit in pain enough. And that, that makes me unrelatable, right? Because most people sit and wallow in pain and unhappiness and frustrations and I don't because I'll go to service and then I get happy. And so it's a huge hack. I think you should take it on and there's a three-step process I wanna guide you through that I think will help. Step number one is understand how are you built. So I believe that the people are built in two different ways. Some people wanna serve the world, right? You've got the big mission. I wanna help a billion entrepreneurs. I wanna solve the world's biggest problem, a lack of belief, right? This is what I'm on. It's never gonna happen, but I wake up every day trying to make it happen. This is, this is my big mission in life, right? I wanna serve the world. Other people are built to serve the 25 people closest to them. Your, your close friends, your family. This is Nina, my wife. She does not have some giant mission wanting to save the world, but she's in contact with people from elementary school in China. You know, she stays in touch with people. She loves it. And so she's a very inner circle kind of person. So if you're in her inner circle, she's gonna love you and care for you and support you and, and just help you out so much. But she doesn't have that big mission. So step one is understand how are you built? Chances are you're built to go serve the world because you're watching this channel. But if you're not, or if you're trying to help somebody else figure out how they're serving, for me to try to tell Nina, you have this big mission and you wanna change the world, it's never gonna connect because that's not who she is. But if you can connect it to doing this will help your family, doing this will help the 25 closest people to you, it'll make a big impact and make her wanna move. Step number two is figure out how can you serve? And, and I'm gonna go deeper into this with my next book. Stay tuned, January 2020, it's coming. But how can you serve? What skills do you have? What pain did you suffer through? And how can you contribute back and help the people around you? It's great that you want to serve. You're unhappy because you're not serving. But how can you actually then go off and serve somebody? And just spending a little bit of time thinking about it, it doesn't have to be this week-long meditation where you're going deep to figure it out. If that's your style, awesome, go for it. But even as a challenge today, you could find someone to serve. You can find some way to serve somebody, even if it's a, a quick five minute interaction. Maybe you see somebody who's struggling on Instagram or Twitter and they're complaining about something that's happened in their life and they're, they're saying, I don't know how to do this. And you, you pull out your phone and you make a quick video message to send it to them. You just helped, you just served. You feel great. You know, knowing that you helped that person solve that problem. All it takes is a little bit of conscious focus on it. We're not consciously focusing on who can we serve. Or for asking the question, well, how can I serve? It's it's being asked with an intonation that is defeating. Like, well, I can't, how can I serve anybody? Instead of asking it, how can I serve somebody? If there's hope, if you believe that you can get an answer, then you can. And so figuring out how can you actually serve people in a way that transfers your skill sets, abilities, knowledge, hope, beliefs, so that they can get a result and you'll feel great for helping them out. And then step number three is how often are you serving? If you're only serving and helping people once a month, you're gonna feel hollow, you're gonna feel empty, you're gonna feel like you have no purpose, you're gonna feel like there's more inside you, you're not gonna feel complete. This is part of what we need as humans. So I like doing it daily, I schedule time. I have a five S morning routine where I go through five different S's, where I wake up and I'll do sing, then sun, then sore, then sweat, then scare. But the most important in there is sore, the third one. And it's what's the thing that you need to do to make you soar. So for me, it's sharing. So for me, every morning I wake up and I think of somebody that I helped yesterday and then I'll, I'll record a message to my Instagram for my stories. And what that does is makes me feel like I'm contributing. It makes me remember that the work I do matters. Thinking of somebody that I helped yesterday is a reminder that what I do matters. I helped that person yesterday. Just one person, it's not a billion, it's one person. And then sharing a message, I feel like I'm talking to that person. I'll imagine I'm talking to that person when I'm making my 15 second video. I'm sharing a message and it's service because it's gonna be helping other people. 
So SOAR is connected to service for me. What is it for you? It has to be on your daily routine somewhere. If it's not in the morning, awesome, but somewhere else in your day so that you are serving people on a daily basis. If you woke up every day and did some act of service in the way that you know how, anybody can open a door or buy the coffee for the person behind you and, and random acts of kindness are great too, but in what you're great at and in what's connected to your purpose and whatever, pain you went through that you can help somebody else through that pain today, if you did that every day, man, your life's gonna be dramatically different and you're not gonna be spending so much time worried about burnout. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, question of the day, I wanna know how can you serve someone today? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this video and you're gonna take some action after watching it, give me a hashtag believe down in the comments too. Opportunity is an interesting word, and um, like most words, it's misunderstood. See, the average person is looking at opportunity as something they're going to get. So they're out looking to get something. Opportunity is what you're going to give. See, it's the person that's thinking of an idea, how can I do more? How can I provide more service for the people we provide service for? Do you know I spend almost all of my time thinking of how I can help you more than I'm helping you? I'm here in my studio. We spent a million dollars building this studio so that I can communicate more effectively with our clients. Opportunity is in giving. It's not receiving. It's not getting. It's giving. It's sharing. It's putting something out there. A beautiful, wealthy lady, gorgeously dressed, went to a happiness counselor and complained that she felt that her life was empty and had no meaning. The counselor patiently heard her out and then called over the old lady who cleaned the office floors. The counselor then said to the rich lady, I'm going to ask this old lady to tell us how she found her happiness and let's listen to her. So the old lady put down her broom, sat on a chair, and started telling her story. Within a short span of three months, I lost my husband who died of malaria and my only son who was killed in a car accident. Life became meaningless with nobody and nothing left. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I forgot the art of smiling. In fact, I even thought of ending my life. Then one evening, as I returned from work, a little kitten followed me home. I felt really sorry for the little one. Since it was cold outside, I decided to let the kitten in. I got some milk and the kitten licked the plate clean. Then it purred and rubbed against my leg. And for the very first time in months, I smiled. I wondered to myself if helping a little kitten could make me smile. Maybe Doing something for people in need could it make me happy as well. So the next day I baked some biscuits and took them to a neighbor who was sick and was in bed. Every single day I tried to do something good for someone. It made me so happy to see them happy. Today I do not know of someone who sleeps and eats better than I do. I found my happiness by giving it to others. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.